Hi, my name is Lori Olvera and I'm the educator for Labor and Delivery High Risk Maternity. I want to say Happy Sepsis Awareness Month. Um, I'm really excited to um, tell you that in October the CNQCC is going to launch its toolkit for OB sepsis, so really exciting work coming. I want to take this moment to review our pathway because sometimes um, in the moment it, it can be, there's a lot of things to do and so I want to take the time to kind of review what we do when someone screens positive for sepsis. So on the pathway, and this pathway is in the report room, we start out here. We're screening the patient and we're screening for the criteria that is listed here. It's a temp above 100.4. Uh, heart rate above 110, respiratory rate above 24, WBC greater than 15,000 or less than 4,000, or you have 10% immature um, neutrophils or bands. If you get any two of those in, and you, you have to suspect an infection, and that's the key, uh, suspecting infection plus two source criteria, they screen in positive for sepsis. That is considered time zero, and that's when we start doing our interventions. So some of the intervention is you're going to notify the RRT. The RRT is actually a great resource for us. They provide that critical care expertise. So they'll come down to the bedside and validate the substance screen. They will do a physical assessment and determine if there's any interventions that we need to do. Um, bare minimum, you're going to be um, at that point calling the doctor to get um, our OB sepsis order set implemented. And um, things to consider asking the physician is um, drawing a lactate, getting a CBC, because you're going to want to see the recent uh, WBCs. Um, and then um, blood cultures are um, definitely get those started before the antibiotics. And we also want to consider, because we're giving antibiotics, to do a creatinine BUA. So we usually get like a chem panel, and we want to get maybe PT, PTT um, to see if there's any coagulopathy or any organ dysfunction. Those um, are the lab tests. Then we're going to want to ask the, we're going to consider what the source of infection is. Um, and by that, you know, usually in labor, the source of infection is choreo. If it's in postpartum, it's endometritis and our antepartum. Depending upon their symptoms, it could be pyelonephritis, a urinary tract infection. Um, those are like our hallmark things that can, call, can be our source. But we're going to want to start antibiotics depending on, upon the source of infection. Um, the next thing is considering if you have somebody that's short, short of breath or there's chest involvement is getting a chest x-ray um, and um, doing frequent vital signs closely surveilling. So now going on to the pathway, those are our interventions that we just talked about going on the pathway here uh, is organ dysfunction. Uh, we're going to be um, reviewing our labs. Our labs are going to come back and they're going to tell us, is there any coagulopathy? Is the bilirubin over two? Um, is the lactate greater than two? Any, um, any of those labs will indicate to us that um, there's organ dysfunction. Now, uh, vital signs, if our patient has a systolic BP less than 90, um, that's organ dysfunction. Or if they just have a decrease of 40 from the baseline, that is also organ dysfunction. Um, urinary output, less than 30 mils for, uh, per hour for two hours. That is also um, criteria. So any one of these will um, um, organ dysfunction in the presence of infection is considered severe sepsis, and we're going to want to move on to maybe consider doing uh, fluid bolus. Um, consider IV fluids, giving a 30 ml per kg, or you could give one to two liters, whatever the physician wants to do. Um, but we would want to give fluids at that point. We want if the lactate is above two, we're going to want to trend the lactate and do it every three hours until the lactate is less than um, two. We're gonna, we're gonna put an O2 SAT monitor on because a lot of times our patients are tachycardic and we're wanting to also make sure that the O2 SATs are staying above 92%. And then we're gonna also, at that time when our labs are back, call the RRT and involving the RRT and what our lab results are. And they'll help us with recommendations. Um, once again, doing frequent vital signs because this, this patient um, is septic. The, the last thing that we're, we're considering on that pathway is septic shock criteria. We always want to keep, I mean, they can come in at any point in septic shock, but our septic shock criteria is you have a lactate greater than 3.9 or you're getting hypotension despite giving that 30 mils per kg fluid bolus. 
if you um, have septic shock criteria, immediately call the RRT, get them at the bedside, have them make recommendations, call your physician, get them at the bedside, um, and then the RRT will initiate a code sepsis overhead, and it's really important. Um, they call the code sepsis, the PMA will come to the bedside and do a collaborative discussion with the obstetrician to decide where is the best place for this patient and how should we manage. Um, fluids, we're giving a 30 mils per uh, kick fluid bolus and we're um, doing the vital signs every um, 30 minutes. So um, this is a very important step to have, it, you know, everybody at the bedside making um, a plan of care for the patient. If the patient is still hypotensive, uh, despite giving your fluid bolus, uh, your 30 mils per kick, you may want to consider ICU because um, vasopressors are going to be needed. So anyways, that's 